Hello, Captain Ethan Whitehall, Company D, Second U.S. Sharpshooters. Today's video, we're going to be talking about the books covering the 1st and 2nd Regiment U.S. Sharpshooters, along with a few of the books that do delve into the Confederate side of sharpshooting. Um, each one of these books I personally own. I would highly suggest that uh, those wanting to do more research into the sharpshooters really take a look and try to get the best possible books that you can covering the sharpshooters, those being the ones that solely cover the 1st and 2nd Regiment. So starting off, we have the 2nd United States Sharpshooters in the Civil War. This one covers specifically the 2nd Regiment from the Camp of Instruction all the way up until their disbandment in 1865. It's a great book, great wealth of knowledge uh, covering the 2nd Regiment. There's a regimental roster in the back, along with the 1864 recruits that were brought in uh, after some veterans were sent on furlough for a recruitment drive. Uh, this covers, as I said, everything that the 2nd Regiment did during the war. Uh, troop movements as the army was on the march, camps during the winter time, along with the battles such as Antietam, Gettysburg, Chancellorsville, uh, the Wilderness, and all the way up until the Siege of Petersburg, where the sharpshooters had their last major battle. The next one is what we refer to in Company D as the Bible. Um, this is the Berdan's United States Sharpshooters in the Army of the Potomac. This covers both regiments during the entire Civil War. There's a great wealth of knowledge within this book if you really want to cover both regiments, if you want to reenact just as U.S. sharpshooters, this is the book to have, especially because it has a huge regimental roster of the original enlistees within the 1st and 2nd Regiment. It places that company to the state they came from, and then from there, it places those soldiers within each company. Uh, it covers everything, including the issues between Lieutenant Colonel Casper Trepp and Hiram Berdan, the attempted court marshals on either of them, the issues with bayonets in the sharpshooters, and the bayonet charge led by the sharpshooters at the Battle of Auburn in 1863. There's also the Long Island Company. This is a relatively newer book uh, put out by a uh, sharpshooter reenactor named Chris uh, Schnupp. I hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, this one covers Company H of the 1st Regiment. This, again, is a great wealth of knowledge to have, especially if you're going to be reenacting as Company H, or you just want a greater insight into the life of sharpshooters throughout the Civil War within the 1st Regiment. Company H being part of the 1st Regiment, you get a better understanding of how uh, the 1st Regiment really operated on the field, off the field, and in winter camps. Next one would be a uh, collection of letters from William Green. This is Letters of a Sharpshooter. William Green was in Company G of the first U.S. Sharpshooters. Uh, it covers his daily life, his thoughts on the Civil War, his thoughts of camp life, his officers, his fellow sharpshooters. Uh, William Green really wasn't that well liked. Uh, he was... Uh, quite a young man when he, he enlisted in the sharpshooters and uh, through reading this book he was I I don't like bad-mouthing anyone that served in the military but he definitely was kind of a whiner um he actually ended up deserting from the first regiment eventually coming back and after doing so he was not very well respected by anyone in company G let alone the first sharpshooters uh, first regiment sharpshooters next one is uh, another journal this is the journal of Charles Maddox of the 17th Maine. Maddox was actually placed in charge of the 1st Regiment of Sharpshooters in 1864, with there being no staff officers available to the sharpshooters. Uh, he definitely had one hard time uh, trying to get the sharpshooters back into shape. Uh, at that point, they had company-grade officers that really weren't doing their duty. They were very lax on running their company's regiments. Uh, he talks about how their uniforms, their gear, uh, their marching was very substandard. The only thing that they really did well at was skirmish duty and target practice. Uh, of course, being sharpshooters in the premier skirmish uh, regiment or 
the two premier skirmish regiments within the entire Army of the Potomac, if not uh, the entire Union Army of the Civil War. Uh, it covers everything from his enlistment all the way up until the end of the war. Charles Maddox actually was captured uh, while leading the sharpshooters. So there's a great uh, wealth of information in there as well during his time spent in a Confederate prison. Next one is also a collection of diaries in a journal of James Merle Matthews. This one is a very, very uh, high priority with us in Company D because uh, James Matthews was from Maine in, uh, and was in Company D. So there's a great wealth of knowledge of the day-to-day -day life within Company D throughout the Civil War. There's also a wonderful roster in the back of the names of the sharpshooters that initially enlisted in Company D, but also what uh, town they were from within Maine. Uh, most of the regimental histories within the other books cover uh, where they were from uh, state-wise, but not really which town they were from. Uh, this book was actually a wonderful find from Amazon. These can be found on Amazon every now and then, possibly even eBay. Uh, these come up very rarely. I've only seen one of these other books come up on eBay once. Again, though, if you can get your hands on one of these, this is a wonderful book to have because it's a great insight in the day-to-day -day life of the sharpshooters. Uh, the next one, which was the first book I ever bought when I began reenacting as a Berdan sharpshooter, was the Berdan Civil War Elite uh, by Rory Marcotte. This one is a wonderful overview of the sharpshooters, both 1st and 2nd Regiment within the Civil War. There's wonderful photographs of original target rifles, Colt revolving rifles, Sharps rifles, Sharps rifle cartridge boxes, and uniforms during the Civil War. There's even uh, the original schedules of the sharpshooters and camp of instruction and their daily life afterwards within uh, the Civil War. The unique thing too about this book is in the very back there is photographs of original sharpshooters that served in the Civil War. Um, again, like I said though, this is a great overview if you want to start skimming the surface of the sharpshooters. Here we have the uh, muster dates and locations of the uh, each company within the sharpshooters. And then we have the photographs of the sharpshooters. Uh, this way, when you read uh, some of these books, you can actually almost put a face to the names of these men that you are reading about who fought during the Civil War. Uh, this book being in my possession for almost 10 years old, or for almost 10 years, has definitely seen a lot of wear and tear. Uh, these books can definitely be bought brand new and uh, for a relatively... Uh, reasonable price. Uh, no, some are no more than $50. Uh, getting into the next three, these are next four. These are definitely the overviews of sharpshooters within the Confederate Army and the Union Army. Sharpshooting in the Civil War covers the Confederate aspect, their rifles, their equipment, things that uh, they would have experienced being on the south side of the Mason-Dixon, along with the uh, great little uh, subpoints like the psychological effect of sharpshooting, both of the sharpshooters and under uh, fire of the sharpshooters. There's coverage of the chaplain of the 2nd Regiment, Lorenzo uh, Barber, also known as the Fighting Parson. Uh, there's talks of the close calls with the... Uh, uh, general grade officers fighting and being shot at by sharpshooters. Uh, I really can't uh, say anything bad about this book whatsoever, mainly just because it's a great aspect to look at both sides of the Civil War. Uh, I could talk for days of the Berdan sharpshooters and really starting to look into the uh, more in depth into the Confederate side of sharpshooting because they were the counterparts that we portray. And it just gives us more to talk about with the public when they're at our events or when we're doing talks at our living histories. Another good overview for the Berdan sharpshooters is Hiram Berdan and his, or Hiram Berdan, his famous sharpshooters and their sharps rifles by Wiley Sword. Again, this is just a great little overview. Uh, you can easily read it within a weekend. It's not a very thick book. And it pretty much covers everything that the 
other books that I've shown you uh, cover. It's just not as in-depth as the one by uh, Stevens, Maricott, or uh, the Second Regiment uh, history. Next one is definitely a very brief overview of the sharpshooters, both Union and Confederate. It's the sharpshooters of the American Civil War by Osprey Publishing. Uh, Osprey does put out some very good books. Uh, even though they're short, they're very knowledgeable and they're fairly inexpensive. The parts that I really enjoy with these books is their uh, illustrations showing the sharpshooters, especially with the early war, uh, gray overcoat, parts of their uniforms and gear, but also the differences of how Confederate sharpshooters and Britannian sharpshooters trained during the Civil War. Shows the differences of the rifles. We have the Enfield, the Whitworth, the Sharps, the Colt Revolving Target Rifle, or the Colt Revolving Rifle and the Target Rifle. Uh, the descriptions out of Hardee's and Casey's of how to deploy a company of skirmishers, how skirmishers would have looked in the field. These are the Confederates. And then just the various uh, wonderful illustrations of the sharpshooters in combat, but also the gear that they wore. Uh, the other one that I have is just a brief uh, magazine article covering what the sharpshooters did at the Siege of Yorktown. Uh, it's very in-depth to the 1st Regiment during the Siege of Yorktown. However, there's nothing more uh, past that during the Civil War. And the last book, which is probably one of the hardest to come by, and the reason why I'm saving this for last, is The Best in the Union Can Muster, The True Story of uh, Berdan's U.S. Sharpshooters at the Battle of Gettysburg by Michael Foley. Uh, Michael Foley being a very good friend of Bill Skillman, Brian White, and Dan Wamba, uh, who are the Berdan historians I was talking about earlier. And this one, again, is a very short book, but this is jam-packed with knowledge of the sharpshooters from the start of the war and really covering what they did at the Battle of Gettysburg and how they were both regiments really key players in their own aspects of the Battle of Gettysburg during the Civil War. So all in all, you can definitely spend uh, a good, good chunk of money on these books. Uh, however, to really fully understand how the sharpshooters fought, lived, uh, and died during the Civil War, I'd really uh, suggest any one of these books. Um, you know, you can start with the cheapest, or if you can really find a really great deal on Amazon or eBay, you can uh, spend that money on that and have a very wonderful collection of books. Um, there is a few other ones that aren't really uh, mentioned in this, one being the uh, letters and journals of uh, Wyman White, who was a first sergeant in Company G of the first U.S. Sharpshooters. And there are a few other uh, obscure ones that are either very long out of print or are just very hard to come by, just like The Best Thing You Can Muster by Michael Foley. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel, free, uh, please feel free to comment down below. If you like the video, please uh, give it a like. And if you like more videos, if this is the first time you're seeing uh, these videos on this uh, channel, please subscribe. And if you have any uh, video uh, suggestions that you'd like to see us do, uh, please comment that. Please comment on that down below. Just write a uh, suggestion and then what kind of video you'd like to see, and we'll try to accommod uh, accommodate accommodate that for you. Excuse me, just got tongue tied. Uh, so. This is Captain Ethan Whitehall, Company D, Second U.S. Sharpshooters. Thank you for watching.